You have to walk in the authority of the word. It's not your age. It's not your age. It's not your gender. It's your faith. And we have to go from faith to faith and strength to strength. So I took a team of people to Fiji. I think this is one of the most unusual miracles I ever had. And this again, walking in the authority of the, of the word. So we were in a big church. There were about 6,000 people there. And we were having a lot of healings and miracles, people getting born again. And I felt led to have everyone sing in the spirit. And so 6,000 people are singing in tongues now listen to me, do you trust me? Put your hand on your heart. Say, you wouldn't lie to me. <laughs> and so, you know, we're singing in the spirit and all at once we hear an angelic choir singing above us and joining. It was the most awesome experience and somebody got it on tape. And you hear us and then you hear this angelic choir singing. See, folks, when we get into Jesus and we get into the Word, you can expect all kinds of good things to happen. It's awesome, awesome what He does. So I'm going to go into some early times in Russia. Now, I pray for Russia, India, China every day. They're the three largest nations in the world. But we went into Russia when it first opened. And so, you know, it was quite challenging, but we just went for it. People had not been in a church service for 70 years. They didn't know how to behave. So when you'd get up to speak, they'd stand up and talk to you. You'd have to say, sit down. But we had some of the most unusual miracles I've ever had in my life there. And I think God just showed up and showed off. You know. I think God likes to do that. I want you to remember that. Would you stand up? <laughs> Say, God likes, God likes to, show up to show up and to show off. To show off. Okay, you can be seated. So we're praying for people uh, that had arm problems. You know, I felt led to pray for people that couldn't lift their arms, had problems with their arms. So you know, and they just responded to faith. It was wonderful. And faith works every place because faith has authority. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I won't forget. Faith has authority. So we had all these people to come down to testify. And this one woman, her arm, she had had a growth under her arm and the arm, it had disappeared. But her arm, because of the lack of blood, was black, but she could lift it, you know, and the growth wasn't there. So my daughter was in the line because she was bringing the people up uh, to give testimonies. And as this woman is standing there, her arm is black. It turned the natural color. Oh, stand up again. Say believers, lay hands on the sick and they recover. Now put your hands out, say, my hands have miracles in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Miraculous. And then I want to pray for people with grief because I want to take authority over it. You know, I think people get depressed, enter into grief, and you don't take authority over it. You're not supposed to be full of grief. You're supposed to be full of joy. And so this is a very important thing. And I want to share, I, because I feel like there are people here that are really in grief. When my husband died, I had been married a long time, good marriage, and I think this would be about six years ago. I awakened one morning singing in tongues. And I said, God, why am I singing in tongues? He said, because I danced over you in the night. 
And I found out something about grief. It said Jesus took your sicknesses, right? He took your sins, right? But did he take your grief? Do you give it to him or do you carry it? So I want everybody to stand up. I won't single you out. You say, I'm going to really be hungry for lunch. <laughs> so put both your hands up. Say, Jesus, Jesus I, don't grief. I don't carry grief. You carry grief. You carry grief. And, I you. and I thank you. You've carried my griefs. Carried so I'm throwing them on you. So them on you. There they are. Yeah. There they are. Yeah. You have them. Now wave goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, grief. Goodbye. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want to share some other things about countries. See, I like to pray over countries because I feel very called to them. But now, don't get mad at me. So put your hand on your heart. Say, you're too old, too sweet. I can't get mad at you. <laughs> but I used to go to Central and South America and have some meetings there. And you know, it's very easy to go to those countries. And so God began to deal with me, not to just do what's easy, but to go to the hard places that we think are hard. So we're getting ready to do healing meetings in Bangladesh, in Saudi Arabia. It's amazing. If you push a little, you'll find God enlarges you. So it's nice to go where it's comfortable. Oh, my goodness. It's easy to go to Central and South America. That's a picnic. But when you go places that they don't believe in Jesus, they don't believe in healing, and they hate women, and then you see him show up and show off, what do you think that does? It's amazing. And so I like to go places where, you know, it's not popular to be a Christian, not popular to be a woman. So I want to talk to you about Morocco. Morocco is in northern Africa, and God dealt with me to go to Morocco. Well, there are three kinds of Muslims, basically. There are Sufi, Shiite, and Sunni. Most Muslims are Sunni. But Sufi are in Morocco. Shiite are Iran. And so we went to Morocco, and, uh, you know, they won't let you do a meeting. But we met with the leaders of Sufi. And so we had a dinner for them. Food is very attractive to people, you know. So we had a dinner for them, and so I'm uh, talking to the lead man of the Sufis, and he's sitting beside me. He speaks English perfectly, and he said to me, what do you do when you feel cold in your religion? I thought, am I hearing this? And so I, I told him, you know, what I do, I read the Bible, you know, I pray. And so they went around the table and began to tell what their needs were. So I said, well, would you mind if I prayed for you in the name of Jesus? And folks, we ended up with such a usual anointing of love and anointing for healing and miracles. One of them got up and said, oh, I want to sing a song to us. So he went and got the instruments in another part in the bar and sang. You see, folks, God loves people, and there's a key to them. It might be food. It might be singing. It might just be being honest to listen to where they are. And, you know, I have found if you just love on them, that's a big deal. Loving on people and just and not being, oh, I'm so religious, you know, I, I lay hands on the sick, I cast out demons. <laughs> but just... I love you, love to be with you. And that's what I see here. You really love people. And you get down here on the floor and cry with them and pray with them. You think that's going to pay? That's going to pay big time. So then, you know, I went to Albania. And Albania, you're not supposed to do anything, except God doesn't know that. 
You, you hear that a lot. You can't do anything here. Oh, really? No, no, you can't. They don't let you. But we had a wonderful meeting in Albania. And we had people come and get saved and get spirit-filled. But let me talk to you about Iran. Now, you know, you're not supposed to go into Iran with the gospel. God doesn't know that. He loves Iran. So we got a visa to go into Iran. Well, you're not supposed to do anything in Iran, you know. But we got to go into some very unique areas of Iran and pray for the sick. Now, Iran, you know, they have those bad leaders, but they are getting ready. I think God is going to break Iran open with a big, big revival. So I've gone there twice, prayed for the sick. And again, I think being old and a woman is a real advantage because they say, look at that old woman. She can't do anything. And we know women are stupid, so they let me do everything. Iran has been a wonderful nation for me. But I, I have found you have to walk in the authority of the word. It's not your age. It's not your age. It's not your gender. It's your faith. And we have to go from faith to faith and strength to strength.